we have recognized over the last couple of years that there is a subtype of colon cancer that has a BRAF V600E mutation, the same mutation that we see in melanoma and other cancers. It is a driving mutation for colorectal cancer, but in order to target it, we have to go at it in a different way. So we've spent the last few years figuring it, that out. Now, if you find a BRAF mutation in your patient, you already know that that's probably a bad prognostic sign. They tend to be more common on the right side of the colon cancer, but they can occur anywhere within the colon. Um, there are more than one BRAF mutation, and so what we're really talking about here is just the V600E mutation. We don't really know what to do with the other BRAF mutations yet. So it's important to find it. You want to know it as a prognostic marker for your patient, but now you also need to know it because it is a therapeutic target. We're not quite where we were with, say, HER2 and breast cancer. We all remember that at the beginning, having a HER2 positive breast cancer was a bad thing until we figured out how to target it, right? And so with BRAF, we know it's a bad prognostic thing, but increasingly we are figuring out how to target it. Now, that doesn't mean you're rooting to have a BRAF mutation, but it is less of a bad thing now because we have ways to deal with it. If you have microsatellite unstable colon cancer, you have lots of genetic abnormalities, one of which is commonly this BRAF V600E mutation. There can also be BRCA mutations and other like that in MSI high colon cancers. And for us in the colon cancer world, we have to figure out how to prioritize those mutations. Would an MSI high colon cancer sort of push us more towards immunotherapy, or would the BRAF mutated colon cancer push us more towards a targeted therapy approach? I think the consensus at the moment is in fact to try for the IO approach first. But it's sort of a wealth of riches uh, when you have both of these targets in these patients.